What's up, everybody? I'm Clayton. You're listening to Ages of Fear podcast number 38, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, released in 2006, directed by Jonathan Liebsman. The budget for the film was $16 million. The movie grossed $51.8 million, giving it a net gain of $35.8 million. Those are the numbers for Tex Chainsaw, the beginning. I want to say just a couple things before we get into this review. One of those is a special thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you very much for being here, uh, for clicking that subscribe button, uh, for joining the family, and for choosing to come kick it with me here in Ages of Fear. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Also, if you're new to my channel, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps my channel out greatly. If you're enjoying the content, that's the way to support the channel. And I also want to give you guys a few recommendations. Um, Movies and Beyond with Michael. Uh, he, he puts out great content all the time over there on his channel. So go check out Movies and Beyond. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, and enjoy all of his amazing content. Uh, you can also become a mem uh, member now of his channel. So uh, you can cash in on all the cool stuff. Um, also the Bearded Entertainment with Eric. Another awesome channel. Does great content over there as well. Hit that like button and subscribe to Eric's badass channel, uh, The Bearded Entertainment. And then lastly, uh, if you're just a fan of movies in general, you like tuning in to good movie reviews, let me recommend Brian Lomax to you. Brian's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's got an awesome channel of his own that he's you know puts out great content all the time over there so hit that like and subscribe button for brian as well and feast on all his awesome content all right all that out of the way let's get into this review uh we're celebrating 50 years of the texas chainsaw massacre this year so we're going through all these movies uh reviewing them giving my thoughts on them and just as a reminder, guys, this is just my opinion on these movies. Uh, so there's no need to get offended or upset by anything that I say. It's just my opinion. And I would love to hear your opinion. Feel free to leave your opinion in the comment section. All I ask is that you be respectful to my opinion and I'll be respectful to yours. All that out of the way, uh, let's get into talking some TCM, the beginning. So, uh, I... I gotta say, just right off the bat, uh, this movie is a prequel to the remake, the 2003 remake. Um, so it, it is very similar. It's got very similar vibes to it. Uh, they kind of carry over the same tone and same atmosphere from the remake into this one. Uh, the question is, is it good? Do I like it? I'm glad you asked because you're about to find out. Uh, getting in first to the positives with the beginning. Um, one of the things that I do like about this movie is that atmosphere and tone that they kind of bring over from the remake into this one. Uh, it, it's richly saturated with that, that kind of dark Texas tone that you, that you want in a TCM movie. Kind of this gritty dirty feel uh, that it's got going on very intense all the way through um i like it they they take it serious um they they put you into into the story um to feel you know the emotions feel the effects of what's going on um so i i do really like the the tone and the atmosphere um of both the remake and this one so that was a strong positive for me um, I also uh, thought that there are a couple standout performances. One of those was by Andrew Bernarski as Leatherface. He returns again in this one. He played Leatherface in the 2003 remake. Um, and he they brought him back to play Leatherface again in this movie. And I got to say, I believe I said in my last review, he is my favorite Leatherface. Um, I, I think he... he he brings the most to that character. 
I love the look of Leatherface. I love the performance by by Andrew. I think he he does a little bit more acting in this one than he did in the remake. Uh, that's partly due to the mask that he wears in most of this movie. It's just kind of this jaw piece um, that he's wearing. It looks super cool. I, I love that that jaw piece look that he he rocks in this one. Um, but it, it also forces Andrew to do a lot more acting through his eyes. Um, and there's several good shots, I, I feel, with with just Andrew's eyes and the way that he he acts in, in those scenes, I think, is is really good. So I think he he brings in a, a, a really good performance as Leatherface again. He's my favorite Leatherface. He's just this big brute powerhouse that you would not want to run into uh, if, if you saw him um, anytime, any place. Uh, not a dude that you you know you, you want to cross. So uh, yeah, he he's he's very good in this one. Um, also, the late great uh, Arlie Ermy, R.I.P. Uh, he's fantastic as Sheriff Hoyt in this one as well. He returns. Uh, to play that character again, really all of the Hoyt family uh, from the 03 remake come back and play those characters again in uh, the beginning. So that is good. It does feel like there is continuity with the remake. It does feel very much in that same storyline of of the remake. So that's a positive for me. Same actors coming back to play the same characters. Um, you, you have that continuity there. And um, yeah, I, I think Arlie Ermey, uh, he really gets more time to shine in this movie as Sheriff Hoyt. Um, and I think him and Andrew Bernarski as Leatherface really carried this movie. I, th I think both of them are just solid in this film and they, they turn in really solid performances. All, uh, other positives um, I have are the the characters in this movie, the, the main group of characters that we're following, um, I think are very likable characters. Uh, you have um, uh, Jordana Brewster playing our, our main girl, our final girl, Chrissy, in this movie. Um, I think she does a fine job, very likable character. Uh, and then you have these two brothers, Eric and Dean, um, who are set to be drafted, enter the draft for uh, Vietnam. Uh, and there's some tension there, some plot there with those brothers. One starts off as, you know, this strong, tough, brave guy, and his brother's kind of more the coward that comes around and by the end actually shows incredible bravery. Um, and I, I like the... Uh, the relationship between those those brothers and um, I think the performances are good the chemistry is good and the characters I think are well written they're very likable characters you can easily uh, invest and and get behind these characters so um, the character writing I thought was good uh, presenting good likable characters uh, in, in the movie uh, and then I, I also just found it um, highly entertaining. I, I was very much invested um, in this film with the characters, uh, with the tension. Uh, it really, uh, they, you know, they really up the ante as well with the, you know, with the kills, with the violence. It's it's much it's much more visceral uh, than prior entries in this franchise. Uh, that bothers some people. Uh, it doesn't really bother me as long as it fits the film. And I think that kind of grotesque violence uh, fits this type of movie. So I, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I, I, I kind of want more of that in a TCM movie. Because um, that's kind of what th these movies are kind of built on. The, these horrific, very visceral, violent um, events that happened in, in Texas. So, uh, yeah, they, they really upped the ante there. Some really violent and, uh, uneasy scenes, um, that really kind of, 
you know, uh, give you, give you that, that kind of nauseous feeling in your stomach when you watch them, you know, the scene Leatherface is skinning Eric, uh, skinning his arms and, you know, peeling his face off. Uh, yeah, some really, really gratuitous stuff there. Uh, so yeah, those are all my positives, man. I, I, strong positives in, in the character writing, um, and some of those performances, atmosphere and tone, all that stuff, um, really good. So moving on to the negatives, uh, this movie does have some issues, um, that, that need to be addressed. I think primarily in the story and the script, um, I think is where this, this movie takes some, some bumps. Uh, the story it's, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to do a prequel to the remake. Um, I just think that the story that they decided to tell wasn't necessarily the best story to tell. Um, and the problem with the story that they told was you already know the end uh, before the movie begins. Or as the movie begins, you kind of already have the ending. You know that none of these Hoyt family members are going to die because they're all in the remake. So this is a prequel to the remake. Obviously, none of these Hoyt uh, family members are going to die. Um, and you also can probably assume, safely assume, that all of the main cast that we're following are not going to make it out alive. There's not going to be any survivors, because if there were... The only logical thing would be to report it to law enforcement, which would mean, you know, they would have come and arrested the Hoyt family and we wouldn't have had the the remake. So, I mean, you kind of it kind of takes you out in a way from the from the suspense of wondering what's going to happen, who's going to make it out, who's not. You kind of already have the answers. Um, So for me. I think the the better route that they could have gone if they wanted to do a prequel to the remake um, was do a story about the family before the family. Do do a story of the Hewitt's ancestors. You know, maybe set it in the late 18, early 1900s. Do, you know, like Sheriff Hoyt's grandfather you know, the, the early family of the Hoyts and kind of how they came to be the family that they are. I think there's a lot of stuff you could have done there. You would have still had that suspense, not knowing what was going to happen, who was going to make it out and who wasn't. Um, and I think that that could have worked. But the story that they gave us, just being a prequel to the remake, we kind of already had the answers before the movie begins. So... Um, for me, I felt the story writing was, was a little weak. Also the script, I do think suffered from some issues. I think it suffered from quite a bit of plot conveniences. Um, to be honest, you know, you have, you know, the scene where the, the main cast that we're following, they get into that, that car wreck as they're driving on the road with the, that biker and just conveniently, Sheriff Hoyt happens to pull up as soon as that wreck happens. You know, even though he was nowhere in sight seconds before the the wreck happened, conveniently the wreck happens and then Sheriff Hoyt happens to pull up. Um, you, you know, and then and then you have plot conveniences like the the one girl who tries to run away. She gets in the car and starts driving, and then Leatherface just happens to be in the right place at the right time with the meat hook shoving it through the girl's shoulder and pulling her out of the car. Even though literally like two seconds before that, he was in the house, in the basement of the house. And then, you know, two seconds later, he apparently teleports through the, you know, through the house outside and happens to be at the exact place where the script needs him to be in order to, you know, meet hook the chick uh, and pull her out, out of the car. You know, you have conveniences like that. You have, towards the end of the movie, uh, Jordana Brewster's character. uh, She's trying to, like, escape through this crawl hole of the meat market. She gets out of the crawl space, and then there just happens, conveniently happens to be a car 
right outside that market for her to get in. She conveniently happens to have the keys to that specific car. And Leatherface just conveniently happens to be in the back seat of that car. So, you know, there, there's a lot, there's quite a bit of conveniences throughout this movie. You have Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Hoyt, who somehow manages to have a sheriff badge with his name on the badge, Sheriff Hoyt, even though the sheriff that he killed to get that badge wasn't a Hoyt, wasn't part of that family. Apparently, that sheriff just kept a, a second sheriff badge in his pocket with Hoyt's name on it. Um, so it's kind of a messy script in, in a number of places. I, I think it's there's some lazy writing there with, you know, just forcing things into the script that they need to be there. Um, and I'm just not really a fan of that. Um, some of the dialogue, I think, was, was also poorly written. Um, just didn't really feel uh, like it, it fit. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think the writing was as good, nearly as good as the writing in the remake. And then some of the directing by Jonathan uh, Liebsman here uh, wasn't wasn't really on par with what Marcus Nispel did in the remake. Uh, Jonathan, it looked like you know some of the shots here, uh, you, you the camera wasn't very steady. It wasn't still. There was some movement, some shaking going on with with the camera in a few scenes. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just you know bad camera work by the dp i'm, I'm not quite sure uh, i don't want to point the finger or anything um and then there i noticed some sound issues a little bit um in the sound editing it it, it felt like some of the the sound editing was off uh the sound was kind of coming from uh a place where it shouldn't have been coming from based on where the characters were speaking in certain shots if that makes sense um, so yeah, th there, I, I felt like there are some directorial issues there as well. It could have been cleaned up probably, but overall, I think it was, it was good. Uh, it was solid, um, good performances by the actors, uh, definitely had some, some, you know, emotional, uh, impact there as well. Um, so yeah. Oh, my, my overall thoughts, guys, I do like this movie. I give this movie three stars. Um, so it is a solid entry. It is a good Texas movie. Uh, I do have fun with it. I am entertained with it. Um, and I could throw it on and have a good time. So three stars for me uh, for Texas Chainsaw at the beginning. What are your thoughts on this movie? Uh, do you agree or disagree with my rating? Let me know in the comment section. And until next time, kick it and rock on.